Hi everyone, my name is Brett Ari Fisher, also known as the New York City Broker. Today I'm going to be sharing some tips with you discussing what are doorman buildings. The official definition of a doorman building is a building where a dedicated doorman is present, usually 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, depending on the structure, at the entrance and ensures only the residents of the building, their guests, and relevant people can get into the building. Apart from providing basic security, a doorman can also receive delivery packages on your behalf, track down maintenance staff, the super, and you can leave your keys for your dog walkers or maids with the doorman. For doorman buildings that have a separate concierge, a doorman's job is usually just to open the doors for people coming into the building and making sure that only the right people get in. The concierge does the rest. But in many New York City doorman buildings, the doorman might perform the duties of both positions. What are the different types of doorman buildings? While it's not an official classification, doorman buildings can be divided into three different types. A regular doorman building usually just hires a full or a part-time doorman and super. A full service doorman building will have more building staff and amenities. These buildings usually have a full-time concierge and a resident manager as well. Some high-end luxury condos and co-ops can be classified as white glove. These doorman buildings have several building staff members, including porters that can help you with your luggage. The name white glove comes from the gloves that the staff is usually required to wear, possibly to display a high level of cleanliness. And the concept is to offer residents of the building a five-star hotel service in their apartment complex. So when did doorman buildings first become popular? Doormen had been around for more than 2,000 years since there were doormen in the old Roman empires as well. In New York City, doorman buildings have been around for about 160 years. Doormen in New York City are unionized, mostly under the Essential Workers Union 32BJ SEIU. The concept of doorman buildings has changed over the years, and nowadays virtual doormen are also becoming commonplace. It's a type of off-site building security where the people watching the door via cameras are usually sitting in the security building head office. They supervise and control entry through building doors by verifying either manually or using technologies like facial recognition or other forms of electronic ID for building residents and their visitors. So what are some pros and cons of living in a doorman building? Doorman buildings provide more than just a luxurious way of living. They offer several benefits, but there are a few drawbacks of living in a doorman building. Some of the pros are, number one, doorman buildings offer more security. They control entry in the building and ensure only the residents, their guests and visitors, and people who have official business can enter. Two, residents of doorman buildings find maintenance and service more efficient compared to other buildings. They don't have to spend hours waiting for or tracking down the super or property manager. Number three, there is always a friendly known face at the door, which makes apartment buildings feel more inviting and appealing. Number four, they can end up being your very close friends since you get to know one another on a more intimate level. Number five, Doorman receive your packages so they don't get lost. However, there are many non-doorman buildings that now ensure there is a room or space for your deliveries or the super can receive them as well. So what are the cons for living in a doorman building? Number one, doorman buildings tend to be more costly. The more building staff there is, the higher your maintenance or common charges can be. Number two, there is usually an additional cost of tipping for yourself, especially during holidays and sometimes your guests when you are hosting an event. Number three, doorman buildings don't offer as much privacy. The doorman knows about your guests, your deliveries, and when you're leaving or coming back to the building. Even if they are discreet and don't share your routine with anyone else, some people prefer a little bit more seclusion. And number four, if you are an introvert, the social interaction with your doorman and or your concierge might not be a plus if you generally avoid such interactions. So there are a few common misconceptions. Helping you with heavy weights and watching your pet or kid for a few minutes is not necessarily part of a doorman's job. It's common courtesy and you should consider paying him or her back with a decent tip. 
but it's very important to treat your doormen like human beings as they deserve our respect as well. Sometimes we lose sight of that. So how much more can they be than non-doorman buildings? If there are no other major differences, a doorman building can be about 10 to 15% more expensive than a non-doorman building. That number can fluctuate drastically depending on the location, size of the apartment, amenities, and other aspects. But in general, that includes both the property cost and the higher maintenance or common charges that you will pay. So what are some famous Manhattan doorman buildings? A few famous New York City buildings that you may have seen or heard of are the Dakota, a 19th century co-op famous for John Lennon's murder, 56 Leonard, also known as the Jenga Building in Tribeca, a 60-story skyscraper known for its glass exterior with 145 unique condos, and 15 Hudson Yards, which is an 88-story tower known for its artistic design. Thanks so much for joining me in this discussion regarding doorman buildings. If you have additional questions, please feel free to reach out to me at brett at the New York City I'm Brett Ari Fisher, the New York City Broker. Have a great day.